The conversation that um, a lot of us have been having here at WKYC with our friends, with our Facebook friends, is my kids are home. They're, maybe they haven't gone back to school yet because of COVID protocols and following the holidays and all of those things. And we are all watching what's unfolding together as a family. Yes. Yes. How do you talk to your kids about what's happening? It's an excellent question. And I think it continues the theme of this year just unimaginable things happening in real time that affect all of us simultaneously. And I think that's a rare thing, you know, as a parent that it's affecting you as much as your teenagers and children and family members. Um, so I guess my first thing always is to take a deep breath and breathe um, because I think centering yourself and literally just catching yourself and saying, wow, and giving yourself a chance to pause uh, really helps sort of ground you in not, not just what I need to be, thinking in terms of having this conversation, um, but from a parenting end and for the kids, what they're seeing and watching. Because as much as the kids are seeing and watching TV and footage and all the stuff that's coming in, you know, you know kids, they're watching you and they're watching the look on your face and the look in your eyes. And, and that's where they're looking to say, are we okay? The rest of this is scary and the rest of this, you know, can come at you. But what they're watching you to say, you know, is my world still all right? And so the idea of um, I, I'm taking a deep breath. Is it scary? Yes. You know, um, wow, this is big. Like acknowledging it, validating it. I'm always, I think it's very important not to Pollyanna. Oh, it's fine. Turn that off. Don't dismiss it. I think especially in this day and age, kids are so bright. They they are so aware, keenly aware of what's going on is, you know, don't dismiss it. Um, but once you've validated, yes, this is unusual and this is big. Um, so let's talk about it. You know, let's talk about it. What do you see? What do you hear? You, can, you maybe ask questions. You know, what's the scariest thing for you? What's the first thing you're thinking when you see this? I know what I was thinking, you know, as a grown up. What are you thinking as a kid? So a lot of it is not just what you say to them, but starting to pull for dialogue right away. And that way you're able to hear what their thoughts are, because especially with younger kids, oh my heavens, all the things going through their head that we never know. And so our mistake sometimes is we make assumptions about what they want to hear, or we make assumptions about what they need to know where we should tell them, and we could be way off base. So asking and saying, you know, what's the thing that you noticed first or most, or does this worry you? Um, and some of them would be like, well, it's, it's you know, it's messing up something else. So you get a sense of like, so big. Um, or yeah, you know, what about this? What about that? Then they guide the conversation and you're really speaking to them, not just in their terms of what's relevant to them, but age appropriately. Um, and you know your child, you know, you know the kids who really are more surface. They don't want the details, just the facts. And the ones who are, are gonna, if you give them facts, they're gonna be like, mom, that's not enough. You know, dad, please, you know, but what about this? But what about this? Be patient, you know, listen. You know, like those are the big parts of just starting with, like, let's set the tone and let's have a dialogue about it. And to the best of your ability, speak honestly, um, you know, in terms of what you're seeing too and saying, this is highly unusual. Shall I keep going or do you want to let you answer? No, no, that's <laughs> I could so, do so great. I mean, I, I, there's so much of what you said there. I feel like we have to unpack it little by little. Um, but yes, I think for a lot of parents, maybe the, the first instinct is to shield their children yes. from everything. We want to protect our kids. Um, yes. I love that you say, you know, in this in this sense, you have to you have to be real with them because they might be picking up on something if you if you go that route. Yes, yes, and and it's so important that they um, believe your truth and your honesty that you're going to say that to them. And again, back to this year, it's been a year of things where you can only protect them from so much. And a, and a day of social media, TV aside friends talking, Instagram, so is they're hearing everything. And so if they say something to you and it's not consistent with what they're hearing, you don't ever want them not to trust that they can come to you with anything and you're going to give them your truth. You know, this is how I see it. You know, this is, you know, you know, our family, this is what I see is, and no matter how you guide the discussion is you really are speaking from a place of sincerity so that you don't lose them or that they stop coming to you because they think, well, mom's just going to tell me, you know, it doesn't affect you or you're too young to worry about it. Or it'll be fine. They don't want to hear that. You know, they really want to hear you say, um, what do we need to talk about? You tell me, you know, as you're saying this. And even at a young age, it sounds like your, your advice young. would be to parents, you, you know, oh. again, to, to kind of talk to them. I, I like letting the child set the tone of the conversation yes. or, or bring their concerns out or what they're noticing yes. out. 
Yes, for, you know, even four or five people think, oh, they don't pay attention, they pay attention to everything. And again, sometimes they're reading the room, they're reading, you know, you, other family members, phone calls you're getting, they're overhearing things, mom, what's wrong? You know, why is it different? Why are the people on TV upset? So even the youngest ones don't don't get it. And again, the mistake we make sometimes is you try to answer things, that's not what they're asking. You don't have to give them the details of why they're upset. You could say, people are angry. There are some people there at the Capitol, you know, and then use it as a chance to talk about history and our democracy and like be proud of these things but to say some people are mad you know when i think of kids younger ones brothers and sisters fight grown-ups fight we have differences of opinion you know the playground is is that people are upset about some things and some of them really are really angry and they're down there you know letting folks know i'm not saying yeah and you can say you know this is a little tricky but I, I don't agree with how they're doing it you know what do we always say you know don't be aggressive you know is is don't pick fights is who are your helpers like there's always a way to have differences of opinion and and still at the same time respect each other and value each other and I think that's what people are trying to figure out but right now these people are very mad and right now they're just you know they're just sort of thinking that way um, and then I shift quickly and especially for younger kids who really need the security piece to who are your helpers you know is the people are okay is I would talk about this Capitol Police they are highly trained specially trained they are the best at protecting and taking care of the capital our government you know that people in our government they are taking care of the people you know on the grounds in and so you assure the kids that that's their job you know and, and they're going to do amazing to try to keep people calm you know they'll be strong if they have to you know but they really want to make sure everybody's safe and keep people safe because then you're really going to a kid's dialogue and that is who are the helpers who would you go to if something happens on the playground you know who is it that you would go to to seek out who is the folks that you know um so you just start speaking their dialogue yeah i i think back to mr rogers that was one of his big pieces of advice and, yes, and yes, you know that's right in these uh, hard times you know to look for the helpers there on the ground and it certainly seems yeah. like you could you could see why that would give all of us some peace at this point um yes it, it, it seems like one other thing you, that you mentioned i want i wanted to return to you could kind of shift this conversation back into some of your values use it as an example yes. of, of things that, that you've already talked about in other situations Yes, 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 absolutely. And, and again, and I actually, unfortunately, would connect it because I think it's going to tap into for a lot of kids in a world that is ever changing in a way that none of us have ever experienced. Literally, their little heads yeah, and teenage heads and every heads are just blowing up with this too. You know, we're starting 2021 with more upheaval and, and this turbulence. Uh, this is never, they may ask, this has never happened before, has it? And to say there's a lot of times where we probably don't know in our country that people have been really upset and they came on grounds and, you know, they, and they did these things. We don't hear about it, but we should study some history lessons and learn more about that. I don't know if it's gone this far. You know, we can explore it. So you can turn it into our history, but it is part about we as a country and again i think of it as brothers and sisters you know we all we all value the same thing we are one big country um that sometimes just has very different opinions and when we get heated about it you know a small group sometimes takes it too far you know who those people are and you can say that to the kids who are the ones in the neighborhood who always you know you know take it too far and then what happens they get in trouble you know they're grounded you know or, or they don't get in trouble enough whatever they're thought and who are the ones who are the peacemakers you know who are the ones who come in and who's the one who always says something to you that makes you feel Feel like, well, yeah, you're right. Um, I think a huge message is to listen. It's important that we listen to each other. And and so these people really, obviously, you know, they're, they're trying to be heard. I don't know. This is the way that we would do it. It's not how we teach you. It's not what we would want. Um, but you know, listen and respect, and maybe we'll understand more why they're so upset. But for right now, people need to be calm. This isn't how you handle disagreements and problems. And then that's the same for our family. It's and if you want to bring faith into it, you know, if if you're a faith-based family and you want to say, you know, we're being watched out for. And also, we're in a world that really respects the United States and democracy. And they're watching this and thinking, wow, even even this great country still has issues. You know, sometimes times where they get really upset and they really we don't always handle things well, right? There's going to be apologies that are have to be made there's gonna be people who are gonna have a lot of there will be regrets people who wake up tomorrow and and are sorry for maybe how they behaved um, so this is how we learn I'm sure a lot of your job uh, is is counseling parents is being there <laughs> yeah, for them especially. as well even though you're a well, child psychologist as we talked about I learned that early on <laughs> it's, it's the adults you, you have to kind of calm the parent the parental yeah. anxiety yeah. down as well and there's so much of that just about the word the future as you said you know yes. here we are yes. we've just started a new year as we look to 2021 whether that's on the pandemic front or the political front there's so much uncertainty yeah. uh, just 
from that from that high level view, what do you say to parents right now uh, to keep themselves in check and, and and to keep reining the anxiety in as we step into some <laughs> unknown territory? Mm -hmm. Well, and I guess what I would say is if, if you believe this and if you can, I think what would be wonderful to say is kids are going to ask, are we okay? Are we going to be okay? We as, as our family and us, are they going to come to our town? You know, is this going to, and, and if you can say we will, you know, this is hard. This, this is a struggle. I, and if you can say, I believe we will. And if that's a place of faith, or I certainly hope you will, like this is different than usual. This is bigger, but then I trust, you know, I trust that the people in large, you know, will talk to each other's sides and they'll come together. Maybe this is what had to happen for two sides that have been fighting for a lot this year. You guys know that, you know, you've been hearing all the fighting with the stuff. Maybe this is what it'll take for them to come together and realize, you know what, our country is much more important as a whole and maybe they'll come together and actually find a way um, so if you can speak to those ideas of, I believe it'll be okay, I believe we'll sort it out, um, I, I certainly hope and pray that people will be okay and safe along the way and it won't get any worse, then you can turn it back to them, what would you like to do? What do you think we could do to help? Because whether it is, whether they want to write a letter, if they want to say something special, think of something tonight, um, what are the things that don't change for us today? Sometimes that helps to root them in, you know, but tonight, so what are we going to have for dinner? Because this big thing's going on in the world, but well, maybe we want to have a treat. Like maybe tonight we need popcorn. This is a popcorn night or, you know, usually we don't do ice cream during, you know, during the, the weekdays, you know, but tonight I think there will be hot fudge um, because again, that's that kid friendly, like that they breathe and the fact that you smile and laugh and say, what do we need to do tonight? Do you need an extra, you know, time before bed? You know, do you need a bubble bath? Like, what do you need? And it gives a chance then for them to tell you again what they need to be soothed. And you, and you may say, I think I need to too. You know, he's usually, you know, I'm sort of the same thing as, or do we need to get on the treadmill? Or do we need to go out even though it's cold and walk the dog around the block just to breathe and to say we're here and we're okay. And, you know, please come to me with questions. Please let's keep talking about this. You're going to hear a lot about this in school and history. This is, you know, this is big. Dr. Durant, thank you so much. I think that those are, are some really great pointers for families out there.